I really want to talk about is like the range work, like as you put the, you know, um, ranges are easy to see, but tough to justify. So we're going to go through a little bit of Pandora's box 2.0, which is kind of unreleased butterfly effect two stuff, which will help with ranges. And, um, something I've noticed a lot of people doing is we have a ton of tools. Like we have origin levels, we have hold levels, we have inverse levels, we have reverse levels, we have we have tons of tools, right? But they're not right. always applicable. And I find people get through this queue where they they kind of treat them like a checklist. Like they'll look at something and they'll they'll go down the list and say, Oh, okay, well, here's a level. Is it is it is it this type of level? Yes or no? No. Okay, it must be an origin level. Let's let's look at this and say, Oh, it's an origin level, it's not an origin level. Okay, what about reverse levels? Mm -hmm. Like they kind of go through a queue. It's almost like if you were on a job site and you were trying to screw in a screw. And you tried every tool in the queue until you found it. It's just like, well, if you just knew what tool to use, you would not need to go and use the other 19 tools first to find out that you needed a whatever Phillips number 10 screwdriver or, or, or whatever the case. So um, that's going to be something that we can cover today, which is, I think, going to be help, helpful as well. So okay, when, when we look at this, let's just start by first defining the range. So like you would go back to this point here and you'd say, OK, like uh, pr pretty easy. What, what looks like is happening here is you have two outcomes, either um, this is the bottom of the range and this is the top, or you could have a scenario where this holds and goes up here. So your range now is actually from here to here, or you could do yeah. option three, which is your range actually hasn't seen the bottom, but it has created the top, which is the case of, uh, of what happens here. So then we just kind of go forward and it's like, okay, good. That's, that's the case. So you have like a range here and here, and that's kind of like the beginning of your range. So th those two are intrinsically connected, just almost like point number one and point number one, right? And then as, as time goes on here, you get point number two is connected to kind of point number two. So this is like an interior part of the range. And then, you know, point number three, which would be here. Um, where's point number three? Like, is it, is it, is it here? Or are we going to go lower in the move to create that range? Like that, that's just kind of how we have to like start to think about this thing. Like you just have kind of these points that are just connecting the move. And then what we really need to do is, is understand like what, what's been happening with this move in order to um, start setting up a kind of a, a criteria for mirroring and for Pandora's box. Because the interesting thing about a Pandora's box is we learn about it very early on in future trading, but it never becomes this tool. It's, it's not like a hold level where you're like, oh, here's a Pandora's box. Let me use it. It becomes more of this theory that we use more of like a, oh, this is a Pandora's box, but it never really has a use case. It just okay. becomes this information in our header or like a talking point. But Pandora's box 2.0 um, the cool thing about Pandora's box and, and why I teach it like this is that there's first comes Pandora's box, which is just the understanding that a range can go from like here to here. And then it has like in between points, right? Like that and that. And they diminish down against each other. So it's not, not helpful for trading, but just a good knowledge point. But actually what happens is a Pandora's box gets created, PB Pandora's box get, gets created from a mirror. So a mirror upon completion turns into a Pandora's box, which gives us um, now actually using Pandora's box as kind of like a tool, like a, a hold level. So, so what we first need to do is we kind of have to understand that the, the most critical point of any kind of mirroring that we do on a chart, any kind of thing where we're saying one expectation is to hit the other expectation on the bottom is, is like extreme accuracy. So like this is very simple. We have a four hour level, it's hit. Great. And then we have a deep dive of target. So then we can simply go and say, well, this four hour range was tested again. So let's actually just extrapolate the range here and say the range exists anywhere from, say, here to approximately here. So as we go down and look for for combo levels, we go, OK, well, here's now you've, you've got the hourly right here. That's that's great. So let's just mark this as the hourly. And then you can go down to the 15 minute time frame here. And you can say, OK, you've got kind of like this untested thing like this is tested. Uh, that one's tested. Okay, this is untested. Great, that's perfect. Like you got this like untested, uh, fifteen minute level, and then go down to the five minute level. Ah, mm, we're gonna have to redo that. And apparently, we don't have access to that one. Okay, well, let's try this again. Let's see if I can do five minute level here. Yeah, perfect. There we go. And then inside that range, you'd go in here and you'd say, okay, like this five minute level is tested. That's good. Uh, this is untested, so that's kind of perfect, right? Like you've got. You've got kind of your range developed and, and combo levels. Like you've got this like nice, easy way to see like, okay, well, if we were to go back and obviously now we can delete this um, one hour level because the combo levels kind of exist like top of the range, break level, um, greediest point hold level, 
um, 15 minutes, kind of some, some type of mid between level, all, all, all within some like set of combo levels. So this is super important when we're doing mirroring because we have to find, okay, good. It's the five minute level. This is super important because we have to know if, if we're going to set that expectation on the bottom, like if we had this as say like the hourly level and we mismarked it, we're going to be looking for an hourly level down here and it's going to be a complete, just it's, it's going to be a shit show because you're going to, you're, you're, you're going to be looking at the wrong levels. You're going to have all the wrong information, but at least now we know, okay, we have a four hour level on top. It deep dove to the five minute. I'm sure if you went to like smaller time frames here, you could see like a battle for these levels on probably like a three or a five minute time frame or something. You could see like, it looks like it tries to break over the four hour. It does. It hits the 15 minute kind of lingers around there. You can just go to like a one minute here. Just take a look at, see what happens. You, you probably have like a, just like a constant battle for these, these levels, right? You get over top of that four, you hold over top of the four, you bounce to the 15, you get over top of that 15, you go to the five and then you just dump down like, whoa, that's a crazy, <laughs> that's, that's actually 3% in two minutes. Wow. And then it bounces mm -hmm. right back yes. up and draw. Wow. That's actually pretty crazy. I hadn't seen this before. Um, that, that's a lot of movement. But anyways, the point being is that we actually have an expectation now so that we can create something on the bottom. So, you know, when, when, when we're creating these kind of like these range plays, the whole idea is to take a mirror and to see if it can turn into a Pandora's box. So what we would do is we would start to now look for the four hour levels. Like, obviously it's not going to be this. This is way too high up in the range. Um, it's just, it's just too high up in the range. But what we can do is we can start looking at you know, this four hour level here. And actually this one is untested. So we can go even go to here, this four hour level. You've got one here, but again, it's, it's just kind of not like you want to look at the bottom of the range. Like you're going to have some type of like origin levels that are preset from, from all the way back here, like origin level to break this part of the four hours. So this will break the four hour. This holds the four hour. And I'm sure you have combo levels inside of here, but really at the very top of the range, you, you do want to go to kind of this bottom of the range too, right? So we kind of need to mark both four hour levels. So we're going to start there as, as like what this is doing. Um, this four hour level here, I would say it's pretty akin to this right here. Like I would look at this and I would say, okay, before deep diving, it's final target at the top of the range. It kind of had this four hour level right here, like wicker body doesn't matter. It kind of has this four hour level that it was fighting. And then, so it fought this four hour level. So I see very much so like this range here connected to this range here. It's kind of like the level that's going to hit before the final deep dive of that target, because that would complete the, the mirroring would be bottom to top of the range that's cycling the move, right? So that would kind of complete, complete what we would look for here. So like we could just take the replay tool off and then we already know it hits that four hour level. And, and that's fine. And I just see that very much as like this here is this moment here. Um, what we're really looking for though, is to see the completion of this mirror to see what is going to happen with this move. So what we really need to do is go back to this range and then we need to start breaking this thing down. So like if we were to, you can say this would be like the hourly, maybe this is kind of, kind of a, I just call it like a dirty level. It's not really clean. It's not really that great. Um, what do we have for the 15? We do have a 15 minute level right here. It's kind of tested. It could be a reverse. You got one right here. Okay. So we got, we've got our, uh, we've got kind of the same thing going on at the, in this chart. We've got a four hour level followed by a 15 minute level. And then we got a five minute level. Perfect. We kind of have like the exact identical setup on the top and the bottom four hour with a 15 with a five. So this is looking pretty, pretty great because actually we've, got like a mirror image top and bottom of the chart you've got 4155 4155 so this is where it gets really interesting because now we kind of know that because the five minute got hit on the top that technically that five minute should get hit on the bottom and this is where a mirror will turn into a pandora's box because this is where you can use pandora's box in to your to your advantage to say oh we actually have a move here and i'll explain that um okay. yeah because if, if that completes, like the, the mirror is complete, you've entered a Pandora's box. Because because what's going to happen then if that mirror is complete is you're simply going to do something like this. You're going to have range trend to range trend like this, or even probably actually this, because that is the start of the move, the break level. Um, so you're going to have like this, and then you're going to have something akin on this side, like this to, well, it's going to hit here. This is probably going to be a daily, I'm thinking. Mm. Yep, it's a daily. Perfect. So that's good. We're going to have like a daily here to where, wherever that hits down here. And, and you're going to have that. That's the completion of that Pandora's box, right? It's so like you're going to hit that, that five minute level and then perfect. So if you do this event, you do have a Pandora's box. And the great thing about a Pandora's box is it gives you automatic trades because a Pandora's box is literally going to go from this trend to this trend, to this trend, to this trend, to this. Trend. And it might have like stop offs here and there. And it might do it like five times or 10, 10 tests. But it kind of gives you like this automatic trade 
Like I would call these automatic trades because if a Pandora's box is to be true, it is literally, and we've seen this for years, just going to bounce back and forth between every single time a trend hits until it gets to this point and it's going to linger here and then it's either going to break up or break down. But literally you have created, you have taken the range and you have said, okay, I understand what's happening in the range. We created a five minute test. If we do that on the bottom, we are mirroring. If that five minute level is complete, that mirror M for mirror becomes true and it turns into a Pandora's box and a Pandora's box gives you automatic levels. So like AL, we'll just say that for AL because they're, they're trades. You can take short, long, short, long, short, long. Okay. So, so it gives you this kind of like very easy, simple cue to follow. Now this is where it's going to get really interesting is when it doesn't hit that level. So now, because we have prescribed that kind of components on the top, like we've said, okay, we have, uh, okay, let me get rid of this one too. We said, we've said we have that five minute level on top. So we have to hit that on the bottom, but what happens when it doesn't get hit on the bottom? So let's go look at that and let's add like one more level here. Let's look for like an hourly break. So it's kind of a plus one time frame to that 15, which would be the biggest level inside of that four or sorry, sorry, the minus one. Um, do you have anything that could be a break level? You could have this one here. Yep. This could be a break. So then if you actually go and look at this, you kind of like, okay, you have a set of different things that can happen. So by this hitting on the top, we have a couple different things. So the first scenario would be if it actually ladders that four hour perfectly, because this didn't ladder the four hour. It actually kind of did here, but it broke through it and hit that um, five minute level, greediest level. So actually, if we hit this four hour level, what we're essentially saying is that this side is breaking and we're not Pandora's boxing. So it wasn't a mirror. We're not Pandora's boxing. We're actually laddering against this move to break it because we're starting to break that four hour level and this is holding. So this is cool because it changes the automatic trades you can take because now all of a sudden trend becomes a spot that you can constantly take longs and hold levels become spots where you can also take those longs as well. So you can start taking like 15 minute levels, hourly levels, and they become safer to take because you're saying that the range is actually breaking on the top side based on the fact that your five minute level here is supposed to mirror on the bottom. But if you ladder off of that mirror, it's like the mirror could never complete and a Pandora's box can't exist. So we're actually not Pandora's boxing, we're laddering up. So when you look at the range, if you ladder off that four, you've got automatic trades on trend and you've got automatic trades on hold levels. And those trades, they no longer go to like inverse levels like this. They actually go to the breaks of moves like this. So your automatic trades kind of become like, hey, you've got a hold level here, take it to that break level, take your exit there, and then buy that next bounce to that next break level up here like that, right? And then you're gonna have another little bounce and then you buy that to something in here, which goes all the way above trend, which cycles this trend. Cause then that trend would like, it would be in a cycle, right? It would be moving like that. So it's really cool because when you have a mirroring situation happen, like what we do right now with the range, like understanding that range at a deeper level, we can just say like, oh, well, we have automatic trades that are going to happen based on what we hit. And then if we hit that level below it, so we kind of went over two scenarios. One is you hit the uh, five minute level and then you're buying trend on both sides. Like you're just literally just bouncing. And it was like super easy ABC mode. Number two, you ladder off this and then all of a sudden you're buying trends and hold levels, right? You're buying hold levels and trends and you're never taking those on the top as shorts. You can take the breaks as shorts because you wanna be taking something like this, but not this, right? Cause this will be like, oh, hits this level, goes here and then falls down to a hold and the move's already broken and then it'll get over that break and it'll create a higher time frame backside hold level, right? Like kinda, kinda straightforward in a way, a little advanced, but kinda straightforward. Scenario number three though, is you actually don't hold that five, but you hit a break level and you start going up. All of a sudden you cannot use this trend, but what you can do is you can use this trend. So you can use the exact same theory on the other side. You can use your interior trend as automatic spots and you can use inverse levels as automatic spots. Like this one is tested, so we wouldn't go there, but we would go right here. It's like we would use this level. If we hit this blue here, you would take a short here or a trend and they become automatic trades. It's like the same thing on both sides. It's like you're just, you're just flipping the chart based on what's getting hit on the bottom. And so, so now what you're doing is you're finding spots where automatic trades can exist based on what the range is showing you. Because this five minute is revealing everything we need to see on the bottom side, it's almost like what doesn't get hit shows you more information than what does get hit. Like if this five minute level on the bottom doesn't get hit, it's telling you more information because it's saying we didn't hit that level. So there is no Pandora's box. You cannot bounce between trends. Well, we did hit the break level. So now we can 
use the uh, interior downtrend and and the uh, interior hold levels like this one or this one, whatever, whatever ends up getting created because you did hit that break level. So you are breaking the bottom side of this move. So now you can take those automatic trades at these inverse levels. And then obviously if you exact same thing, if you bounce off here, all of a sudden you, you can take these hold levels like you couldn't take, say if it hit this level here and then it creates like an hourly hold, you you couldn't take that hold level. You'd need to be more looking towards like deep diving the break level if this thing is going to hold. It's going to need to go and it's going to even maybe even want to create an origin like that and then hit that in the future before it goes up. So all of a sudden, if, if you've hit this move, you can't take these hold levels. You have to go deeper in the range. See what I mean? Because it's showing you that the, like what side of the chart is breaking, whether it's this side, whether it's this side based on what level gets hit here, because that's intrinsically connected to that mirroring situation. And then simply if the mirroring completes, hey, we're in a Pandora's box. Cool. It's it's just bouncing back and forth between this trend to that trend and et cetera, et cetera. So you can really use like like ranges and mirrors and, and Pandora's box becomes a tool, right? Like it becomes now like a, oh, okay, we're in a Pandora's box. These are trends we can actually take longs and shorts on. So now it becomes a, a tool like hold levels. But the problem with it, with it is, is people just say, and not by the fault of their own, just by the way I teach the material. And I always taught it like this way on purpose. I always taught it like, okay, what do I call this? Well, I call it a Pandora's box in a mirror because if I'm standing there looking at myself in, the, in a mirror, it's like two opposite ends of myself, right? Like it's two exact opposite ends. So like when I released Pandora's box back in the day, I knew there was another component called mirroring. So that's why I just called it mirroring. And then mirroring is actually the component that connects right to Pandora's box because it's just, again, two, two of the exact same thing on either side. So you're just looking in a mirror at yourself, two exact cottons or two exact peaches, right? So like yeah. Pandora's box and mirror, but then that's where it gets really neat because once the mirror completes, Pandora's box becomes levels you buy, which are the trends. So people have a tendency to just say everything's in a Pandora's box. They don't really understand that a mirror has to create a Pandora's box. You have to have a mirror complete in order to create the Pandora's box to have that kind of compression cycle against each other. And those become your automatic trades. So when you understand now that there's a five minute level here, you know what tool you're looking for. Because you know now you have to see what gets hit down here to understand which level is to be hit next. So now you know which tool to use for which job instead of just going through a cycle. When, when we're talking about ranges anyways, when, when, when we're just going through a cycle of saying like, oh, do I use an origin level? I don't know. A hold level. Well, there's yeah. an origin here. It's deeper because the justification just becomes, oh, this level is deeper. The origin is deeper, therefore equals less risk. But then you miss trades all the time if you misidentify that you're not in a Pandora's box or you're, you're laddering up. You're not going to hit origins. So now you have the ability to say like, this is what's happening in the chart. So this is the tool I need to use. You know, again, don't hit that five minute level, start buying holds and trends Hit that five minute level religiously buy trend, hit that break level down here, start buying origins and taking shorts. So like, it just gives you like a, a perfect set of like automatic trades to take because you're, you're now understanding like, okay, this is the way the range is showing me what it's going to do. This is the tool I need to use. Does that kind of make sense? Oh, yes. <laughs> that was a big rant. That was long. That was like 15 minutes of straight talking. So hopefully it wasn't too much. <laughs> no, no, that was great. That helped a lot. Um, um, I'm on Pandora's. I'm, I'm working on future of trading now, back testing. So, and I'm yep. on Pandora's. So this is, I guess, a perfect introduction to that as well. And that helps yeah. a lot. This, this is Pandora's box 2.0 when you can take mirroring and understand that mirroring is the birth of a box, like birth of a Pandora's box. And it was always meant to be this way. It's just you have to teach the material in breadcrumbs because it's just there's so much to know, right? So mm -hmm. it's just like Pandora's box comes first and then we have mirroring and then we put mirroring in Pandora's box, get Pandora's box 2.0. And, you know, ultimately like the best case scenario right now is you just you see that five minute level get hit. And you just have your Pandora's box complete and it's an accurate Pandora's box. You just have like how many trades and these become really nice because I like to call it what, what I call automatic trades. They just like help sustain your account. You just constantly taking longs and shorts and longs and shorts and, and they can be big. They can be big longs and shorts. Like this is a huge amount of movement. This is, you know, on, on leverage trading. That's, that, that's, all I, that's gotta be like 20% or something. It looks huge. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, still a lot. It's still 12%. Like that's still 1200% on a, hundred X contract. So it's still, it's still really big, right? Like hard like, to justify <laughs> holding it till that for that long, but there's still like really good trades, even if it's like one or 2%, they become automatic so that they help float your account and they help give you that kind of growing capital 
without having to take too much risk. As long as you understand the range, you'll find those automatic trades. Plus one, minus one is another one that we'll talk about because I think it's going to help you with your scalping because you said plus one, minus one is um, kind of, or, or sorry, you said scalping is kind of where you're, where you're wanting to focus, but I think plus one, minus one is going to help um, a lot with that and to really find some other kind of cool opportunities. So let's kind of delete some of this stuff here. Uh, yeah, let's just delete it all. Uh, let's find a trend. Okay, start highest time frame. Easy peasy. We're kind of just going to go back into this move here um, because we have some history here. So you got a four daily trend here. That's fine. And you're going to adapt it to a four hour level. So plus one, minus one is a really interesting concept um, that I don't get too much into because again, it's like butterfly effect 2.0 stuff, but it will help, I think, with your scalping. I don't think this one is going to be immediate for you. I think you're going to have to have some time to digest this because plus one, minus one can get pretty complex. Like the kind of trail it creates is, is quite complex. Um, I know it takes most people a few tries anyways to, to kind of say like, okay, I, I get it. So don't, don't be um, put off with it by it. If it's like, whoa, that's a lot. I don't know how to do it myself. But then opening your mind to that theory will really help. So like you see this all the time when you cycle a trend here and you're saying, okay, well, like, yeah, the hard close is here and then it's here. And you never really kind of get this conclusion of like, okay, well, it's hard closing, but like, to what end? Like, to, to what end? Like, it's just, it's constantly hard closing. Like, what am, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, to what end does this help me, right? Like, it's just, yes. so, so, so like, we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep, like, we'll just adapt it to kind of like one of the final points here, like right here and then right here. This one is fine. So we can even go right here. So what's going to happen is we're on a four hour time frame. We started this daily, but then we're adapting it down to the four, right? And, and that's fine because the daily is just a little too aggressive or you can even use the four right here. But technically what would be um, most accurate would be the daily base, the four hour reach. And you're just going to see something entering a cycle like this. So it's just like forever cycling. And it's like, okay, well, what are we supposed to do about that? Well, there's, there's something called plus one, minus one. So plus one is when you would go plus one time frame over. But if you were to go to the daily and you're saying, okay, well, I need a hard close on a daily. This thing, this thing's going to be so far up by the time a daily close it closes. Like it's like, yeah. Okay. There's the daily close like that. That's ridiculous. Like, okay. Yeah. There's got to be a way to see it before that. And, and there is, so that would be your plus one scenario. Your minus one scenario would be going to the other side, which is your hourly, um, trend. Right. But this is where it gets really interesting. You can use levels or trends with plus one minus one because they intersect with each other. So what's going to happen is you're often going to see like, okay, we're on an hourly here. You have an hourly hold level. So if you were to go back to this cycle of this trade, like I think originally you were here, um, you break this move, you hit the minus one target. So that's your minus one target right there. It's like, oh, okay, you've hit a minus one. So you hard close adapt this thing out to here. Um, and then you're like, okay, well, follow the trail of minus ones, right? And you're, you're right here and you've hit another one right here, like body, body your wick, right? You're still on the one hour time frame. So you're like, oh, okay, you know, we hit that there. So you know, something like this one here is going to be your next um, minus one. So that's fine. It adapts again. And this is kind of like a cool hidden piece of information with um, plus one minus one is that you're using levels of the negative time frame to see when the move is breaking. So you're sitting here, it's like, oh, the level hasn't hard closed still. And you're here and this one is going to be the same thing. So now this one's hit there. So now you're right here, right? So you can see how the minus one level is actually cycling this time frame. So what you're doing is you have kind of like this trend cycle that's happening and then you can even go like to right here you have this trend cycle that's happening but the minus one is what's holding it down so then you'd be like right here and and then then again or if we hit play here oh actually it hit the back side we don't even need to hit play it hit, hit that right there so we can go right here and you're going to just see this thing constantly cycle which is really neat we, we we see it constantly cycling and then actually i think we went a little too far um looks like we passed the break of the move that, that's fine so then, then you're here and then oh, like, it's fine. It hits that here. It goes to this point right here. And, and like this four hour in order to gain that daily, you can't wait for the daily break. Cause you're, you're losing like seven, 8% or whatever. Like it, it's a lot. Like that was a huge candle that we saw. I don't know how much it was, but this is kind of cool because this is something we never really talk about in cycles is how the plus one, again, because it's just not at that point, but plus one minus one intersects with cycles in the way that we have a four hour trend. So the minus one level is what is cycling that four hour trend. So theoretically, if we break that trail of one hour hold levels, like you can even just go back through this thing, like 
um, all the way. Well, we don't need to. We already did. But if, if you just, okay, we'll go back to the one hour level here. Find that final one here. You have this one hour level. You have this one hour level. And then if you, if you go to this actual cycle of moves, you're going to see like when the final, like once you break one of these one hour levels, because not, no, not a single one hour trail has broken this move here. Like you've, you've got it here, which is cycling the four hour trend. You've got the one hour level there. You've got this one here. You've got this one here. So like the first one hour level that breaks, there's almost like a gap between this um, being a four hour time frame, like this four hour trend here. There's almost like a gap from the daily, which is the plus one to the minus one which is the um, one hour. It's a little confusing because it's one, one. That's okay. Like the minus one is one hour. So like when you break this trail on the minus side, you gap to gain this. Like there's, there's, there's a gap between this and this, and that's where you see your, your, your trend break. And it would be the same thing if you were on a 15 minute trend and you were cycling a 15 minute trend. You'd go look at the five minute, the minus one, which is the five minute levels that are holding that trend. And you would see a five minute trail of levels. And when that five minute trail of levels breaks, you're going to see that it gains the hourly, for example, which we'll go over in, in a little bit here. So let's just go down to like a smaller time frame here. Oopsies. And let's see, because we know this thing's going to break because we kind of cheated and went too far in the candles. Um, you got a 15 minute hold level here. You got one right here. If one of these holds, um, in theory, it should break this move. 15 minute holds and it just snaps the move, right? Because you're actually breaking that minus one and it tests the 15 and then it just goes straight over top of it. So here's your hourly, which you can see it tests the hourly. It's testing that 15, which is the next time frame, the minus one to that hourly, right? So it's testing that 15 and breaking the move. And I'm pretty sure if you go to like a super small time frame, you're going to see like a battle for trend snaps over a battle for this 15 minute level snaps over a battle for the hourly one. If you can see the one minute here. Yeah. Like look how perfect that is. Look at the test, the hourly, this is supposed to hold it down. Instead, it ladders this part of the move interior right? A ladders that 15 minute interior goes after this 15 minute gains that hourly goes to trend and then snaps the move up. Like that's pretty, that's a pretty mm -hmm. violent move. Wow. Two and a half percent. So it's really cool. when you're thinking of scalping because you get into things where you're like, Oh, I've got these trends and you know, I've got this four hour that's constantly cycling. But the only thing that was cycling this four hour was one hour hold levels and none of them ever broke. So when you break that one hour hold level, you're actually breaking your trend, right? And, and like you can see the moment where like, you know, trend in that hourly level, I'm sure they like collide, they intersect like almost perfectly. Like, yeah, it's, there's, there's nothing left on the chart. If you were to go to this one, they're actually like perfectly aligned. Um, if you were to go to this one, that's kind of like the interior moment that, that would have been the next one that was supposed to hold and it didn't really get created. So you can kind of see it's like an, an exact pinpoint moment where that minus one actually breaks that move. So the really cool thing about this is that sometimes you get into a queue of events where in order to break this trend, this four hour, you're all the way down here <coughs> and it's like, okay, minus ones have been holding it down this whole way. And then there's like an untested minus one. So like, let's go right here, for example, ah, uh, this one's tested crap. Okay. Let's go right here. This one's not tested in this moment. So in order to get to this and say like, okay, well, we have to test this next. Now you're going to create a queue of 15 minutes down here. So, so your 15 minute is actually going to gap you to that hourly because it's like, it's like the same thing. Like in order to get that plus one over this, <coughs> you're going to have to get that minus one. So in order to get plus one over this to trend, which as we know is already going to break because you've already completed that queue of hour, hour, hour. Like once this one hits, um, sorry, let me make that a bit clear. Once this one hits, we've already created all these cues over here. Like this is already tested. This one's already tested. This one's already tested. Um, like, and, and so forth. Like these are all tested all the way through. They're all tested. So, you know, the only one that's untested is this right now, but then you're going to have to snap that 15 minute, oopsies, that 15 minute trail. So now you're going to have to go in here and snap like a 15 minute trail of levels. Like you'd have this one here. Um, and, and that will gap to your hourly, right? Like, yeah, you've got your backside here, which uh, I don't really like that start here you got 15 minute there yeah always start from the front or you're gonna like screw things up you got that one there you've got this here which is tested there and you've got this here which is tested there but you got this one that's completely untested so this should gap to that next level um because this minus one now you're you're doing the same thing right like you're creating that trail there which will leave you right here as a reverse that's tested so you're like right here one of those two. Yeah, there it is right there. Perfectly. And you see how you just kind of like start to gap straight up over top of this level and you just regain the range right to that hourly. So you just regain that rate to that hourly because you're doing essentially you're doing the same thing. 
like if you're on a four hour trend, you're going to minus one to the level. That level is going to create like a dump or, or whatever. The one hour level is going to create a dump. And then you're going to have to use those 15 minute levels and have that 15 minute level break. Like this one here would have went to here, which test there, which test here. But there's nothing left. It holds the bottom side of its move and then it gaps straight to the hourly. And then once those hourly levels complete their queue of events, like, you know, then you see you see it snap and you see it break in the other direction. So plus one, minus one is really interesting, especially with scalping. Because we kind of have this um, gapping that happens. And that's the power of plus one, minus one with scalps. Because you can follow a trail of levels or a trend cycle. And you can say, what's the minus one? And if there's an untested minus one, so if like a one hour is untested, in order to get to that one hour, you need to break the final 15 minute. And then it'll just like, like this right here, just gaps straight up to it. It basically just goes straight up to it. It doesn't even have a really have a pullback here. It just kind of holds the interior range. It just goes straight up to it. It's like 5%. That's crazy. Nice. That's a wicked move, 5%. And all because we saw like, oh, the minus, the minus one that actually isn't tested. So the untested minus one, which is right here, the untested minus one is actually being controlled by the 15s that get created down here. And if there is an untested 15, you would gap from the five. So then you'd go to the five minute levels and the trail of five minute levels. And you'd say, okay, well, when this five minute level, when, the, when this one hits and it starts to ladder against it, now you're going to gap to the 15. And is that going to create another 15? Or are we actually going to, are we going to gain that 15 too and gap to the hourly? So this is really cool when it comes to scalping because there's like this awesome plus one minus one that you can use when you're talking about like, you start from the higher time frame down. And, and this is pretty meta slaved at this point. Like, your your market meta 101 here because you're using four hour time frames and and et cetera, et cetera. Like you're you're using like these massive time frames and, and that's fine. That's fine. And you are gonna get that big move. But then you can see where if all of a sudden you have an untested hourly, you know you need to test the 15 minute levels. So you can start shorting as scalps. You can start shorting every 15 minute level that's untested because at a minimum, it's not gonna break the level and move straight over. Like if you even go back to let's go back to rate year you're not like take any 15 minute level that was created off of this you could have shorted that one you just simply would have never gotten entry that's fine you you, you put a trade here you never get entry no problem mm -hmm. go to the next one and do it right here look at that perfect nice little scalp so then you'd go to the next one which is like right here mm, perfect awesome nice little scalp uh this one's never tested no love no loss so you would just move down to here um that i don't know how much percentage that is that one looks a little suspicious that's not bad. Actually, you would have had like just a tiny scalp. That's fine. But then actually that tiny scalp turns into like a, a pretty big. Oh, actually like a fissuring move. Like that's like what? Three, four percent, three and a half percent. And then you could have went to like this one here. Untested level. Perfect. Bang. Wicker body. It doesn't matter. Right. Because even if it's going to break, it has to have a minimum of a pullback. It has to test it, pull back and see if it can ladder against it. So like always you can always scalp that when you're using the minus one theory. Then you go to this one here. Same thing. It's like it goes a little bit over, but it ultimately pulls back until you create this one here. And, and that's the same thing. Like ultimately it goes over, um, you know, a little bit of a reverse there, but then you, you know, eventually you get to here and then it pulls back and then, you know, your next level would have been here, but this never really becomes a hold level. So like you're following this trail of 15 minute levels of scalps and you, you can take every single one. If you're in the minus one scenario, this one or here, you never would have taken because you never actually closed and got under it. So you can see like, oh, hey, this is breaking. So like if you start to get over top of this thing and break it, then you can take a long in the other direction as a scalp. So like plus one, minus one is very advanced, but it's also like scalper's heaven if you can understand <laughs> plus one, minus one. Because it like it literally gives you an x-ray of which levels to buy. Because if an hourly trail was happening and you have an untested hourly level, you now know that you can short 15 minute levels. You now know that in order to get back up to that hourly, you have to break the minus one, which is the 15, which means that you can short every single 15 minute level right so then Neat. yeah it gives you like an like a map or like an x-ray of what to do it's it's the coolest thing ever when you can again minus one is really tough because it's a lot to take in over like a 15 minute speech but you can see the power <laughs> of it but then you're going to be using this and you're going to be like okay shit what do i do um and and it's going to take you time to get it like it does everybody there's not i don't think there's anybody who's immune because because minus one and plus one is a very advanced topic, it's a very, very advanced theory. But again, like we just walked through it, and you could see where like literally every fifteen minute trade was. You, you could like have ten straight positive trades in a row, and then you can start on the other side, and you could have went straight to the hourly and shorted that one too, and just have more scalps, right? So 
plus one, minus one is really, really neat, but um, also very complex.